And we are live today on SEO Career Mastery with S- freelance SEO consultants and a podcast host of Democratizing SEO, Austin S. Sezava. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited to have a fellow podcaster on our podcast today. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we're very excited to chat to you about the industry, about um, the SEO industry, your journey as an SEO. And uh Probably some podcasting as well. <laughs> so um, sure. Yeah, so thank you so much for ha- um, for coming on our podcast. And uh, yeah, Austin, if, I think if we can kick things off with just a generic, general sort of question of how did you get into SEO, and can you take us through like a s- small little background backstory um, of your journey? Sure. Um, thank you guys for for having me. I'm happy to to, to be here. I started SEO. Um, like most SEOs, by accident, <laughs> I studied yeah. uh, music technology at uh, university. Want- wanted to be a music producer slash publisher. Um, I like Quincy-, Quincy Jones. He's always been my um, my hero. And I was more into the publishing side of music. Started to spend a lot of time online looking at how to go about publishing music online. One day I came across a, a display ad that said, earn money using MySpace. This was, of course, during the MySpace era. I, <laughs> and I was a student needing money. So I clicked on it. That introduced me into affiliate marketing, which introduced me into digital marketing, which, is, which introduced me into SEO. I found wow. SEO to be very fascinating. The whole idea of keywords i that was the first if you like trigger that got me into seo the whole idea of keywords people are searching for keywords and you can target keywords to target people fascinated me so i started uh, started to spend a lot of time online learning studying and also doing seo it got to the point where i was doing it pretty much full time uh, I, was, I was spending way more than 35 hours on it. And I thought, can I actually get a job in this? And started looking for SEO jobs. And to my surprise, there, it was actually an industry. It was a thing. It wasn't just something <laughs> I did in my bedroom. And at that point, I had built a, um, a number of sites. And I had uh, some uh, almost like a portfolio. And I used that as my entry into the industry. Got my first professional SEO job uh, for a company called Marco Media, who owns the My Voucher Codes website at the time. They've they've sold it on now, but that was my entry into SEO as a as a professional. Wow, can't believe um, MySpace uh, sparked that as well. That's <laughs> such an <laughs> interesting. I've I always knew MySpace as sort of a social media platform, but uh, to have that spark um, something. Yeah, it's um, funny because I, I I came across the display ad. It wasn't on MySpace. I saw it. I saw it on just a random website whilst just searching for music publishing information, and mm-hmm. I don't know why, but I clicked on it. Oh, I know why. It said earn money using MySpace. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why I clicked on it, <laughs> yeah. and that introduced me into affiliate marketing, and that yeah, that just spiraled into into this uh, career I have now. Brilliant. Did you, when you um, had those um, uh, websites uh, prior to um, getting a job in SEO, was that all passion projects? Yeah, or... yeah, totally. It was uh, so I had oh, um, um, MySpace, which I spent my time on, and yeah. I ventured into building my own websites because I also find that interesting as well. Um, I was I was very much a hands-on person, and writing keywords. Oh, sorry, writing keywords, writing articles, doing keyword research. This was way before Keyword Planner. Um, yeah. At the time, I want to say it was Keyword Tool. I forget the name of it, but it was a better, in my opinion, a better version of what we have now. And the whole concept of seeing keywords and seeing that, okay, if you type this on Google, you can mm. attract people who are searching for this keyword. And seeing the numbers got me very, <laughs> very excited. Mm-hmm. And I remember at the time, I, I didn't really understand the linkage between keywords and content and then getting traffic by that. So I just mm. delved in into it. And um, before I knew it, it was, um, um, I was a 
yeah, attracting a lot of uh, traffic from it and also spending more and more of my personal time on it to the point where it's just like, I need to do this full time. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. And Austin, when you were looking for jobs initially, when you realized SEO actually was an industry, um, was there a thought process of, do I want to go agency or do I want to go in house or was it, take it, was it mainly agency back then or? It wasn't, I didn't even know of um, such a thing as agency in-house. Um, mm-hmm. I just wanted to do SEO. <laughs> yeah. And I applied for it um, for, for a role and was able to show what I did and um, on my own and explain the passion I had for it. And I think at the time that was enough to lend me an, an entry-level role. And mm-hmm. it just so happens it was a client-side role. Uh, but at the time, I didn't consider whether it was in-house or client side um in-house or agency side and Austin okay. you've obviously went through a career progress you know straight up the head of SEO as well how did you decide to make the jump from being head of SEO to going out and being a freelance consultant I consider myself and this is something I've come to realize um over the years but I consider myself a founder and I say that because just doing SEO for a company doesn't, it's not enough pleasure for me. <laughs> I want to own something. I want to own my own yeah. company. And this was my thinking um, back then. It's like, I actually, I'm spending the 7.5 hours that one spent or that I spent um, working for a company. That's just performance time my performance time, I spend probably about the same amount of time outside of work and just consumed with SEO business. Um, to the, it reached a point similar to how I got into SEO. SEO. It reached a point where I had to make, make a decision. Am I going to keep on spending, almost doing two, two, two jobs, spending time on company work and then personal time on more SEO or am I going to combine that into one thing and I chose to combine it at the moment I'm still consulting um, Hmm. as a contractor but eventually I do see myself focusing more on the media side so I see myself as uh, someone who has a media company which is democratizing SEO that I'm building and I'm also a consultant because that is um, um, a quicker path I would say. Mm -hmm. Very good. Interesting mindset shift. Um, <laughs> uh, during, um, I see, I noticed that you did start your freelance slash founding your uh, uh, business just before lockdown had started. Were there any sort of major bottlenecks or pain, pain points naturally that um, you experienced during that time? Um, and I don't know, maybe can you just take us through a little bit of the journey of uh yeah, your experience during the time of lockdown and businesses shutting down and yeah. So it was just prior to lockdown. Um, Lockdown really didn't affect me (laughs) that much. Um, The biggest issue was uh, the gym being closed, gyms being closed. Um, Besides that, it wasn't wasn't much of a a problem. Um, I founded a company just prior to lockdown and I'd spent a year thinking of what, where I wanted to go with my career, what I wanted to do. And I, and that's when I realized I'm more of a founder. I want to found and build something. And I came across, I, I, I thought to myself, okay, a media company is definitely something I want. Within my, throughout my career, I've always been very, very interested in the whole education or evangelize, evangelizing SEO, as I used to call it back then, um, mm-hmm. across a business. And to me, that's, the, that's my ideal, um, if you like, niche in SEO. Um, talking about SEO, SEO training uh, for non-SEOs specifically. And I wanted to do something, have a business around that. The name Democratizing SEO came to me literally, I was on my way from the gym one day and it literally just popped into my head. I see it as a title um, of something. (laughs) I'm not going to say what what it is just yet because I haven't uh, released it. Uh, But I saw it as a title of something and just decided to build build it from there okay awesome brilliant and awesome um 
we see, well, definitely probably myself and Jay, a lot of people, SEOs that we're talking to who are at the top level, considering moving into either like a freelance role or consultancy role, which you're doing at the minute. Um, back when you were sort of like a, a head of SEO or SEO team lead, how were you able to sort of attract the top talent and sort of convince them to sort of join your team rather than go down that route? Hmm. At the time, I wasn't much of a freelance thinking type of person. So I think because of that, I attracted people who wanted to work for a company. And it was a case of showing, promoting the team. I've always worked for a big, when I worked for companies, a big SEO team. So showing, showing them that actually this is where you want to be. You're not going to be alone. I think an area of concern for a lot of SEOs is, are they going to be uh, alone? Are they going to be one person versus the entire business? Considering a lot of business businesses have a relationship dynamic where it's the SEO against the business versus a cooperative um, environment for a variety of reasons i can get into i can delve into that later on if you if you guys uh, want but i always promoted that okay you're within the team this team is uh, the company is dedicated to the team a department you're not going to be alone and mm-hmm. within 18 months 24 months you can expect this sort of pro- progression uh, now, once you're within the business, it'll be down to you to uh, form your own progression. But this role isn't just a one-off sort of thing. There is a uh, a career that you can have within the business. Excellent, excellent. And then I take it, I suppose, on, on the flip side of that, what sort of two or three pieces of advice would you give to maybe sort of junior level SEOs or um, slightly more junior people who are looking to go into freelance? How would you, any sort of tips for them, for those guys? <laughs> network and focus on value actually three things network focus on creating value and um, always have education front of mind both in terms of your education and educating your uh, uh, clients mm. excellent excellent and especially at the moment, Austin, I've spoke to quite a few candidates, high-level candidates, and they've discussed maybe going out and starting consultancy slash freelance. Uh, I know a huge thing is obviously you need clients, and without giving too much away, do you use social media, do you use network events, do you use the podcast? How would you uh, sort of attract clients? Attract clients? Yeah, for yourself. Okay, so obviously you're a contract base, yeah. Right, got you. Um It's a combination of things. So networking, definitely, but networking in a variety of ways. So networking events, definitely. Um, LinkedIn, (laughs) absolutely. Um, And if you can also create value, either in one of those two things or uh, something else. Uh, Let me give you an example. Mark Preston, right, is uh, someone I I, I look up to. He is an, an SEO trainer. Now, if he were to provide value to a, I don't know, let's say an educational based business who provide training, uh, executive training, let's say, by the way, I don't know if he does this. I'm just literally thinking out loud, but if he were to provide uh, value for um, businesses that train C-level um, individuals within businesses, that is very attractive for such a business. Um, he's not networking or promoting himself to the business to create SEO or service the business. He's been a value for the business. So his service is SEO training. The value that the business will have from um, um, recommending him or uh, creating, um, having him as a, a um, yeah, recommending him would be them saying, okay, this person, an SEO trainer, is an added value to what we offer, whatever our services, SEO um, uh, training, executive training to C C level uh, individuals. So, creating if you focus on creating the value and uh, focus on networking with certain, if you like, mediums or channels, you'll be very fine. And additionally, um, it doesn't hurt to be in contact with. Um, um, agencies, recruitment agencies that offer 
um, freelance um, SEOs, um, uh, uh, individuals to to companies. Great. And, and Austin, just a quick one. Um, obviously, you probably worked with a lot of clients over the past sort of five, six years um, on the consultancy side of things. Is there a particular sort of niche or sort of vertical that you prefer over the rest? <laughs> I am focused focusing now on three areas. Um, in terms of niche, I think B2B is mm -hmm. actually very attractive <laughs> yeah. as a niche. I say that because I'm someone who's now um, niching as a service provider in uh, brand server opt optimization. Uh, similar to Jason Jason Bernard, uh, so B two B is very attractive in terms of industries. Uh, three comes to mind: finance, e commerce, and travel. If I had to pick um, one out of the three, it would be finance. And in terms of uh, vertical niche, it will be fintech. Okay. Uh, I worked in at two different points in my career. I worked in uh, the city both in Canary Wharf and in Bank. Mm -hmm. And I like that environment. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I can, I can see myself staying in that environment and, and working for, for clients within that, that's, those spaces. I was going to say, is it because they are sort of like fast-paced or fast-paced niches or is it because they're sort of more lucrative at the minute because they're very competitive? Um, they're oh, for <laughs> niches. Well, yeah, definitely both. And also, I think they are an industry where SEO is not very um, forefront. What mm -hmm. I mean by that is within SEO, there was a time when we were trying to convince businesses to come online brick and mortar business businesses and those businesses those companies were pretty much e-commerce based and because of that e-com e-coms seo is if there were a lead in industry for seo it will most likely be e-com e-commerce whereas finance on the other hand they are just starting to venture into building their digital presence. You have Barclays now who have an SEO person. That in turn leads into other uh, uh, banks having an SEO person because of competition response, right? And mm -hmm. this then filters into different verticals of finance, which of course brings up uh, finance as, a, as an industry in terms of SEO, um, if you like, age. Perfect. Excellent. And just one more, sorry, on the, I know a lot of people have other questions, but um, <laughs> is there a niche that you can maybe see, maybe not at the minute, but maybe a year or two down the line that's maybe just starting to come up? Any sort of insights into that or? A niche that's starting to come up. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if you want to give too much away or anything like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm happy to share. I think the pharma industry is probably an area that is both a extremely rich industry. They are in terms of, they have a lot of, um, uh, they have budget galore, I should say. <laughs> okay. So they are rich in that and heavily restricted, probably more so than the finance industry. And the way things are going now, if you were to look at it from a macro point of view, a lot of the a lot of these companies, these verticals in these um, in this industry, are going to have a need to come uh, to promote themselves online. Mm. With a lot of, let's say, television, um, offline television, there has been a massive shift from offline to now online digital. Netflix, think, think of all these big companies now, that now have a media company. That is changing the landscape for traditional television or cable television, tr traditional media, mm -hmm. which is going to impact their revenue, which of course will impact the companies that are sponsoring them. That would create a need for those companies to want to sponsor where their audience are, which is online. So I do see that as a vertical drastically growing and growing growing quickly there will be a massive need for seo and this is an industry where seo is very it's not it's nowhere near advanced as mm -hmm. e-commerce seo 
let's say. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. Interesting, very interesting. Jay, do you have a question? Yes, uh, um, it isn't controversial. I, obviously, I was on your LinkedIn prior to this, and I read a few things over the last week. And what I wanted to ask was your opinion on the rise of TikTok via uh, Google. <laughs> How long have you guys got? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a shortened, blunt version of it, but yeah. So for the last two years, I've been on TikTok, both as a user and someone who's been studying their, um, that uh, platform. And I've been wondering, are they a legit threat to Google? Short answer is yes, they are a legit threat to Google. They are, in my opinion, influencing Google to make the changes that they are making quickly. Social media and search share the same audience. The leading platform on social media is TikTok. TikTok are now building out their search presence. They're actively promoting people to search. And um, they also quite recently, I think it was just last week, late last week, they have a shop page now. Mm -hmm. So they're going after search and the most prominent area in search, e-commerce. So this is a very exciting time because we're literally seeing two giants battling. If you were to mm -hmm. also look at it from a macro point of view, you have um, Google, US, TikTok, China. China mm -hmm. just happens to be number two in the global world economic power. And they're poised to be number one um, pretty soon. I think the estimates say in, in, around 2030, they should overtake um, the US. So this is, a, in my opinion, a legit concern for Google because I do see people searching on the platform that they are on. The more, they, the more people search on a platform, specifically TikTok, the more their expectations of search changes. And if you have a look at what Google is um, uh, pushing out rapidly, it's centered on speed. And I, I'm going to create an episode around this, uh, but I'll <laughs> give you guys a, a synopsis. <laughs> speed, historically, SEOs, we think of speed from a, a website point of view. We want the website to load quickly, et cetera, right? Another aspect of speed is a user starting and ending their search journey quickly mm -hmm. this is an area that tiktok has nailed and i think it's an it is i believe that google sees this and sees this as a major threat i think their market share will definitely be impacted whether or not they lose their um global leadership in it i'm not sure just yet but i do think their market share will be impacted Definitely. Very excited to see the TikTok you make off this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yes, so it, it, it's, it's funny. I joined, I went on TikTok or have an account on TikTok. I have a profile on TikTok um, and started to create content on there, but was swayed away because of all the controversy Controversy at the time. There was talks of banning TikTok. It just it didn't, feel, it didn't feel like a stable platform for me. So I switched to TikTok. Uh, um, um, YouTube. Okay. But sure, sure. There is a there is a um, the, the, potentially I might go back on TikTok. No, TikTok's great. I mean, like the the search um, area from that. I mean, just having the the kind of Wikipedia pages now into the shop. Yeah. That's such a crazy fast transition that um, that is happening on TikTok. It's it's quite oh, yeah. interesting. Um. I think from from I get pulling it out of the TikTok uh, chats at the moment. Are there any major bottlenecks that your clients have been experiencing? And to flip that, have there been any major bottlenecks that um, you, as a freelancer or freelance SEOs, have been experiencing? Um, I guess maybe in the past year, um, any recent um, struggles that you might guys might be experiencing. The struggles pretty much, I think, will will remain constant for years to come. Uh, mm -hmm. From a client side point of view, that is around resources, um, having resources okay. for SEO implementation. Specifically, I would say uh, dev resources, um, but it's not limited to uh, developers. You have any and every department that impacts 
um, a website can impact SEO. So it's finding resources for um, to implement SEO recommendations from a freelance point of view. <laughs> it's probably again the age old issue around budgeting. Mm -hmm. um, businesses uh, or stakeholders um, needing to find budget for SEO. Um, um, and... awesome. Oh, sorry, sorry, okay. I, don't want to I didn't want to jump on the top of you. Um, how, um, this is uh, on the topic of podcasting as well. Um, how has, I think from a personal point of view, um, what sparked your interest in democratizing SEO and starting up the podcast? And um, yeah, personally, how has that helped you, I guess, uh, seep into your business or how you run your business um yeah so the podcast is an area that i've been interested in for well over four or five years now um and i look at joe rogan as someone who's like if you look at a podcaster he is the guy right he's he's, he's the the person to um to study he uses the same microphone, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I always wanted to um, talk more about SEO um, because I literally, there isn't a day where I don't, um, if you like, SEO. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it got to a point where, okay, I wanted to um, have my voice around SEO because prior to the podcast, I literally didn't have any um presence online uh, because it was either yeah. my time was either spent on client work and or if i was um uh, when i was in-house it was spent on internal training so all of these things i'm talking about i have first-hand experience um mm. um either most mostly because of my in-house experience now the podcast right now is on a phase two Phase one was literally me monologuing. Uh, it was 10 minutes a week. And I was talking about several topics in mind. And phase two, I launched last, I want to say October. It might have been uh, September last year. And this oh. is me speaking with fellow SEOs, hence the, the, the uh, name Talks with SEOs. Mm -hmm. And this is, the podcast is mainly about thought leadership. Okay. And I focus on that because that is an area that I think sharpens my skill as an SEO, keeps me current. Okay. Yeah. And I think when people listen to it, I, my ideal uh, scenario will be someone listening to it and afterwards having an aha moment, which is <laughs> my version of an epith epiphany where they go, huh, interesting. And then they are able to solve the problems that they that they have. And in terms of, um, I guess, running your business as well, um, are there any? How do you goal set, if I can put it that way? Um, and uh, I guess, do you also? Is I guess leading up, to, building up to that as well. Do does your podcast also act as a form of motivation for? Um, for you as well or um yeah do you does it incorporate hmm. that as well motivation not necessarily motivation because i have so so much to say around seo a lot to um share and i also mm -hmm. want to get people's opinions on certain things i l literally don't ever see myself running out of topics i have topics i sometimes i can't write them down fast enough that's how quickly the topics come come, come to me so mm. motivation wise like i am eager by the topic so when i think of like let's say tiktok versus google that's something mm. that really excites me because i see how it affects other areas both from a macro point of view and also a micro point of view mm. in terms of goal setting this is something i see myself doing for ever mm. and because of that, I don't necessarily have a specific goal I want to reach uh, on a yearly basis, but I do have goals in terms of, okay, I want to evolve the podcast and make it into, I have seven phases in mind. 
and it's not just going to be on the podcast it's going to span into other areas and uh, i do have timelines in mind for those uh, but at the moment it's okay keep that in the um um for forefront and just focus on the the weekly uh, evolution of it Brilliant. and awesome just a quick one before i know we're sort of short on time here but somebody's asking in the comments and uh, where they can find the podcast do you have we'll obviously add links and stuff whenever this gets posted again but um, do you want to shout out any sort of so Hopefully. check me out on Democratizing SEO YouTube channel. That's where you can see the um, um, full version of it, both the audio and video. And it's also on audio only on all your podcast directories. Again, the same name, Democratizing SEO podcast, and you'll be able to find it. Brilliant. Brilliant. We will be linking it too as well. Um, awesome. And, Thank uh, you, guys. Yeah. Um, it'll be very exciting. Um, Jay, did you have one last question before we wrap? Yeah, it was just on the topic of leadership. And um, I could see, obviously, you're wrong with how important leadership is. And I've seen in one of your podcasts that you mentioned there's like almost like three types, three pillars in, in leadership. Was it with uh, Malt? Is that how you pronounce? M- Malt, yeah. Malt, sorry, yeah. So I was just looking to quickly go through the three types of leadership. Now, we are introducing a leadership playbook, which we'll be releasing soon from SEO for Hire. So it would be good to run with that topic and just see what your point of view and them three pillars of leadership are. Sure. So shout out to Malte. This is this was totally something that he put together um, and I came across it on his LinkedIn profile. So he mm-hmm. um, purports there are three types of SEO leaders. You have an operator, you have a craftsperson and also a, a visionary. Now, an operator is pretty much someone who um, is more cross-functional. So they focus on if you like, working with non-SEOs across several departments. A craftsperson is someone who is able to focus and, if you like, zero in on SEO work. Think of tech SEOs, right? Tech SEOs, all they do is focus on technical SEO, and they they are pretty hands-on with it. Um, Same with, let's say, Python SEOs, right? This is quite popular uh, nowadays. They are very much someone who's... Uh, want to solve the problem of of Python SEO and they want to zero in on it. That's a cross person. A visionary um, SEO leader looks more of looks more into the what's next of whatever they're working on. Um, they like to keep the big picture in mind. They're very much a big picture person. Um, and whenever before, in fact, before the big picture is completed, they're onto <laughs> the the. The, the next thing so if you like they are more of the person who has the grand vision and they they, they want to be able to drive um le- other leaders and also their if you like subordinates um to make that vision a reality so those are the three types of seo leaders a uh, visionary uh, which is the last one i explained a cross cross person the middle one and an operator Excellent. Perfect. Thank you. Ask questions to end on, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, shame. Uh, we have run out of time, but. Um, Half an hour flies by, you. guys. Yeah. 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 Really <laughs> <laughs> that was we just blinked and it went fast. But yeah. um, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And we are so looking forward to, um, yeah, um, what you're going to be up to next. Looking forward to your TikToks. And, uh, yeah, um, we're just uh, very grateful that you came on the podcast today. And, uh, yeah, I hope you have a lovely weekend as well. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I love what you guys are doing. Thank so you, more, more success to you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, thanks very much for coming on, Austin. Pleasure. Thank Pleasure. you. Pleasure.